Yo, it's Fizz here. Hope everyone has been well. It's been a minute. Things here on my end have been pretty overwhelming with college applications and deadlines coming up, but pushing through it nonetheless and enjoying the moment. The JR65 is another entry level 65, starting at a price point of around $150 made by My Key Club. It comes in this carrying case and the quality of this one was pretty nice to the touch. I was extremely surprised seeing the screen protector kit for the weight. I believe some others have done this before, but it's the first time I've personally seen it and thought it was pretty interesting. I believe all the content creators got notes, and with me being extra special, it took around 2 minutes before I gave up and just ripped it. So yeah, not my brightest moment. Opening up the carrying case were greeted by the board itself. Then a coiled USB-C cable with the branding that I honestly just threw out because I thought it was pretty ugly, a polycarbonate plate, and then I opted for the wired hotspot PCB that does support VIA and multi-layout to an extent. It also just has an insane amount of flex cuts. Opening the board package we have some stuff, and I love stuff. There's some stab shims as well as the Jairus case feet, which I believe are custom cut, pretty nice touch. There's a battery compartment in the board as it does support Bluetooth, and I have wired so I will be using that little silicone pad in place of the battery compartment. The PCB mounting tabs can be mounted using gasket socks or the gasket jackets similar to the recent wave of China based boards we've been seeing. The board itself comes with various foams. We have our USB-C daughter board and extremely short cable that was awful to work with, various screws for the respective weights, as well as the case as there's no visible exterior screws. The side profile offers some flair, but the best part is the stunning two-piece weight with the Jairus text and plastic film that I forgot to record the removal of. Nicely done. I didn't record much build footage for the first time around, but it's extremely simple. Just toss these socks or jackets on. I used jackets and I omitted the spacebar point. Then comes just plugging in the daughter board, fitting the PCB assembly into the case, and closing it off. Really quite simple. I would have loved to try plateless and no foams, but sadly, plateless with hot swap is risky as these switches could be loose depending on the sockets on the PCB. These were decently loose. Another thing to keep in mind when building it is the PCB can bottom out, so to combat that you can use a thin sheet of poron or something else that prevents contact with the case. I kept the polycarbonate plate in the poron plate foam and used some Cherry MX blacks for the first build, and some Gateron ink stabs which were pretty solid. The reason I used poron plate foam is because there's just way too many flex cuts in the PCB and the plate for my liking, and as a result some thin sound is bound to happen. I love it when keyboards include foams like I said because it allows people to decide what they want for themselves, but I am also a firm believer in not having a keyboard specifically designed around the use of foam. I ended up running out of inks due to poor planning, so these Gadron X switches stuck out like a sore thumb, so I'm sorry for that visual monstrosity. But yeah, super simple build, really, there's not a lot to it. Only complaint here was the short cable on the daughter board. It's super difficult to plug in, and because of it, it did making rebuilding just a pain for me. The first build I had used GMK Retromedon. Pretty nice look, but I did want to see how GMK Peach Blossom looked for that pink on pink vibe. I'd say it's definitely a stunner. The keycaps are slightly more saturated than the case, but honestly, they look great and I'm very happy with the way it turned out. Let's listen to how the JRS65 sounds in various configurations, and as always, please remember that sound is dependent on various factors, so don't rely solely on this.
I think my favorite was the Hyperglide Blacks with Poron Plate Foam and Poron Case Foam. This was a slight disappointment to me in the sound area. While I do think it's much better than the sound of QK65 in a similar configuration, I think there could still be improvements. By using the case and plate foam, the board was still able to retain the flex at markets, but significantly less than if no foams were used at all. But sound wise, if a PCB with no flex cuts was provided, I think it would have made the board sound a little more full without that use of foam. Otherwise, there is a little bit of resonating sound that bothers me. The spacebar was enjoyable for most of the builds, but for some reason, I really felt that the upstroke was amplified. Alphas were solid for the most part too, and the only other complaint I have sound wise is that the backspace and some of the keys near the edge have this weird stiff metal contact sound that can be pretty audible. Onto the fuel. I was pleased with how it felt in almost every build I tried. No matter how stiff I made it out to be using those foams, I never found it fatiguing to type on. On the other hand, if a board is overly flexy like my friend Tofu's Plateless Vega that I tried ages ago, it could be pretty tiring. I think this offers a solid balance, but feel and sound of course are super preferential, and these are only my thoughts. The front height is a bit higher than I was expecting, and I do wish it was slightly lower, but honestly it didn't impact my comfort a whole lot. I like the way the board looks, aside from the bezels. I wish the bezels were slightly less uniform looking, and slightly less curved. The weight is stunning, and I'm a sucker for that flashy but clean look. Not much to say here since you can determine for yourself what characteristics you like and you don't like. To me, the JRS 65, even with some complaints, is an amazing choice. I know I'll get this question a lot, so I'll answer it in a straightforward way. Yes, I do like it more than the QK65. Also, the specific combination I have here with me is 220 US dollars, but going with a lower model is perfectly fine. With some playing around, the board sounds great, feels great, and has some visual appeal to it. That's all I have for this one. I'm sorry if it felt rushed, I'm trying my best, but life is just a roller coaster right now, and at the moment, I'm tackling it day by day. As always, feel free to ask me questions in the comments or join my Discord. If you enjoyed, subscribing is much appreciated, and all feedback is welcome. Follow my socials to keep up with me. Have a good one. Peace.